or if the true winds were 059, we're gonna subtract nine before we ever write it down on the paper, just to make your life easier. So 050 is gonna be your magnetic winds. Your wind speed in this case is 15. I chose a big number because if it's like five knots, you're not gonna see a whole lot of difference on the whiz wheel or on paper or in real life. You're gonna make more changes looking out the window that way. But this, this should give us some good readings and some, you know, help you see how the wheel's wheel works. So winds are coming out of 050, so we're gonna spin the wheel first to that, 050. And we're gonna put the, uh, the center circle right on 100 just because it's a good starting place and it's simple to do math from. So the winds are blowing you off course at 15 knots from that direction. So we're basically gonna redraw the center of our circle 15 clicks down, so that's gonna be on 85. So these are two tick in increments, so two, four, five right in the middle. Should look about like that. All right, so this is simulating your first leg being, if your entry point is alpha and your second point is bravo, we're gonna, if you look here, it says magnetic course, that's your ground track. Altitude is just for when you're flying in the airplane. We don't need that for right now. But the rectangles are staggered because you're going from point A to point B. So you kind of read it like that. So 215 is gonna be the course for the first heading. So we're gonna spin the wheel to 215. It's kind of stiff. Oh, it gets softer. Uh, sometimes you have to just like play with them until they loosen up. Good grief. This thing is really tight. This is the one. Okay. So 215. Boom. 215. Now, our ground speed, I didn't write it in. You can do this on your first one, but after your first sortie, your IP is not going to give a crap at all because he already knows. Every route you do as a CISO at IFS, the ground speed will always be 105. So I don't even pencil it in in this column. I write the airspeed, but we're gonna figure that out later. Anyway, since it's 105, you're gonna take your pencil mark and you're gonna slide the background until the pencil mark, not the center circle, but the pencil mark is on your ground speed. So this case is 105. You may need to push on it to get a good reading. If it's to the left, you add. If it's to the right, you subtract. So add, subtract, that's how I remember it. Just do the motion, you'll remember. These are two degree increments here, and they split off higher up if you uh, are way off. You know, you get single degree increments. But anyway, 105, we're looking at minus two degrees. Just round it off, get close. Winds are gonna change in real life anyway, so you don't have to be super exact. So our correction angle will be minus two. We're gonna do this for zero six zero, exact same process, just spin over zero six, zero. Put your dot, which is now down here, back on 105. And we're gonna call that minus one. Uh, we'll round up minus two, it's closer to two. Again, one four zero, same thing. So we're like perpendicular to the wind at this point. So two, four, four, yep. Minus two, four, six, eight, minus eight. If you can see that, that's huge. You're never gonna encounter that in real life here. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your magnetic heading and it's just like when you subtracted nine to get your magnetic winds. You're gonna do it here. So 215 minus two, two, one, three. Zero, six, zero becomes zero, five, eight. One, four, zero minus eight, one, four, two. All right, you're not done yet. Now to find your uh, true airspeed, this is the next place you're gonna go. You're gonna re-spin to these numbers. So we're gonna go to 213. <coughs> bring it down to 105. Yep, then you're gonna bring it back down to 105 just like you did before. Now you're gonna read your center and that's your true airspeed. Roughly 91. Yeah, so about 91 knots. So you're gonna write that down, down here, A to B, 91. B to C, 058. 
Now, what a lot of us made the mistake of uh, when we first did this, we didn't know that you find your true airspeed with the corrected heading, and we were finding it with these headings, and that's wrong. I mean, we were doing it after we spun to get the uh, correction angle, but we weren't right on the money. You need to re-spin it for these. One, it's 120. You've got to loosen this thing up some WD-40 or something. <laughs> ah, okay, whatever. It's not going to move. Roughly 119, 120. Put the pencil mark back on 105, and yeah, just like you said, 120. And then the last. Forty-two. All right. Yep. That's. I like to be as close to it as I can. Just like that to one five. Yeah, one hundred three. Good. So now, the next step is to find. The calibrated airspeed. To do that, we flip over. Don't let this intimidate you. All right. So, at this point, you're going to put this down in in, in reality. You're going to get on your computer. You're going to find your temperature, your altimeter, and you're going to use your in-flight guide to find the pressure altitude correction. Uh, you can use negative down. 10 degrees Celsius for temperature. All right. And our altimeter 29.71. With our altitude, two nine or seven one. Yep, two nine or seven one. All right. What is the uh, pressure altitude correction? Uh, two hundred. So if we're at six thousand eight hundred feet, oh. Plus or minus? Uh, plus two hundred. Okay, so plus two hundred. Okay. And then you'd figure out your pressure altitude average for your route here, but we don't do that right now. So, um, actually, yeah, we do. Seven. Just. 7,000. 7,000? Okay. Let's see 7,000. So say every route leg, every leg on route 7,000. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to spin. Okay. The inside here, these numbers on the inside, that's your pressure altitude. So it's never going to be way over here at 20,000 feet. You're never going to be that high. Um, the scale written. Ignore that up there. These numbers, the plus 50, 0, minus 50, that's your temperature. And that's in centigrade, obviously. So we're at minus 10. Each tick is 5 degrees. It's going to be hard to be precise when you do this, for real. But whatever, do your best. Minus 10, that's going to be 2 ticks. I put my thumbnail on it, and our altitude is 7,000. So I'm going to rotate my thumbnail to 6. Yeah. Come on now. Okay, note note to self. Loosen up your whiz wheel. Don't let it be stiff. Okay. You have to mash on it a little bit. That's ten degrees negative and seven thousand. And they line up as close as I can get them to. Each big number is a thousand feet. All right, once that's there, you don't turn this. You don't touch it. All you do is you look at your outer and your inner. We're looking at airspeed that's always going to be right in this range here because we're a DA20. We're not going to be doing 220 knots. So our true airspeed is 91. That's the outer. So go to 91. Come down, and you end up with that 84 knots. So you write down 84 for leg Alpha Bravo. And then for Bravo Charlie, That's one, fast one, two, 120 knots. Good God. It's fast wind. You're looking at 10, about 110. This would be about 110.
103, same thing. 95. And they may not line up perfectly, you're just gonna have to kind of split the difference. So 103 goes to 95 in this case, that's what I'm calling it. Double check that. Yeah, close enough. All right, from there, you use this scale right here. It's always gonna be printed there for you, and it's not exact. You notice the higher numbers, 110 equals 110. The lower you go, the bigger the difference, 83, subtract eight, uh, three. So for 84, you start with this number, not the true airspeed. 84, that's pretty close to 83, so we're gonna subtract three, and we're gonna get 81. 110, subtract nothing. 95, excuse me, subtract two. Yeah, no subtract two, so 93. Okay, these numbers here, you're not going to write them here like I did. You're going to write them up here for your knots of indicated airspeed. And just leave the ground speed off. You don't have to do that. So for leg A, I write in the white square because it's easier to see. 81, 110, 9 or 3. Okay, and these, theoretically, if the winds are exactly what you spun them to be, these will all equate to 105 ground speed. along this magnetic heading and that magnetic course. From there, estimated time of entry, estimated time of arrival for each leg. It's on your chart, you just write it in. Um, you're gonna find that these winds, when you get out there, the winds will change. Maybe a little, maybe a lot. So know your route visually as best you can. So chair flight. I was gonna say like, if it's Google, Google Earth, Earth. If, if it's one with a lot of landmarks, if it's like some amount 